lovely day, at least inside. <laughs> I don't know outside and depending on where you are. <laughs> uh, so maybe we can start with a short breathing exercise followed by motivations. So we can start by watching our breath mindfully for a few moments. Then we can think, reflect, contemplate. Life in samsara is not so easy. Especially things are always changing. A lot of time Things are unpredictable, uncertain. So in such circumstances where external things are always changing, it's important to develop a strong mind to deal with them. If we don't have a strong mind and the tools to deal with those uncertainty, unpredictable changes, it will make even much more harder. It will make our life even much more painful, much more miserable. Therefore, it is crucial to develop a strong mind, to develop a tools, means, method to deal with those difficult challenges, situations, and changes. And for that, we have to train our mind in the law journals, the mind training, thought transformations. Those are wonderful and powerful methods and tools in dealing with difficult, challenging, adversary situations, experiences, life. And in order to train our mind in that way, we need to study and reflect 
on what we have studied and need to meditate on those which we have already reflected. So it become more natural, spontaneous. without much effort. And we always have to be reminded of the practices. That's why we are here together. And may our ego coming together, listening to the Dharma, reflecting, contemplating, may all of that become cause and conditions to obtain our highest potential fully enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. So we can be more and greater benefit and help and support and service to each and every sentient beings. Day and night effortlessly, joyfully. Okay. <clears throat> to the founder, the endowed, unstandard destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, the completely perfect and fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge, and it will conduct Sugada, Lord of the world, supreme guide of human beings, to be tame, teacher of God and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed and standard destroy, the glorious conqueror, the subdued from the Shakya claim, I prostrate, make offering and go for refuge. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the Great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with body, as many as all realms, atoms, in all expect, with the supreme faith, happy homage. Do not commit any non virtuous action, perform all the perfect virtuous actions, subdue your mind purely. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual appreciation, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew, or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, and cloud. See condition things as such. Through this method, may sentient beings attain a rank of seeing, subdue the four of false and deep be delivered from samsaric ocean perturbed by the way of aging sickness and death. So she begged I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the methods I create to listen to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Sangye Jodan Zogye Jonam Ra Jam Chupadu Dhani Gyap Dagi Shoshe Gibe Sonam Bi Dola Pinche Sangye Duba Sangye Jodan Zogye Jonam Ra Jam Chupadu so
the last couple of the weeks, uh, we finished uh, the fourth point of the mind training of the seven point that is um, integrating the all the practice um, within the five power while we are um, alive as long as we live and also uh, integrating the five powers practice at the time of the death um, so and so today we start uh, the next point the fifth point of the seven point um, and that is the measure of having trained the mind so i think you all have that and so again it is this is to reflect and see evaluating where our practice is where our practice is and how much of the practice has make any transformation or change or not to evaluate in terms of our practice of the law jong you know um, so so through that kind of evalu evaluations and um, reflecting then we begin to know in terms of practice on the mind training where we are and um, and if we are still not making much progress we need to continue to make more effort and if we uh, if we have made a progress rejoicing in that and continue to make more effort so that we can um, continue to progress continue to develop continue to make improvement um, yeah so um, so that is what um, so then uh, within that there is the first line where is integrate all the teaching into one thought so what it means is all the buddha's teachings you know or all the practice that buddha taught you know we integrate in one thought means that um, all these teaching and practice are to to reduce and overcome the selfish attitude and the self um, the selfish attitude or the self-centeredness and self-grasping ignorance you know especially here selfish attitude so whatever practice we are doing in this case lojong practices if it is helping to reduce our selfish attitude the self-grasping ignorance then we are making some progress It doesn't mean that we don't have any selfish attitude, you know. It, it will take a lot of time to, to, to be kind of, to be able not have any selfish attitude, but whether our selfish attitude, the self-obsessedness, the ego, whether it has been reduced or not, compared to, you know, before we met the Dharma for to say, or before we have started practicing. The purpose of the, all the Buddha's teachings is to reduce the, you know, all the delusions which are the very root of our problem root of problem for others which are the um, the main cause 
for our pain and sufferings. And all these delusions arises on the basis of, you know, self-grasping, ignorance, and selfish attitude. And so therefore, you know, many Katamba, as many Katamba masters says, you know, and one of the founder of Katamba master, Dumdumba, as he said, if your practice, if your practice is helping us to reduce our delusions, then your practice is becoming a Dharma. If your practice is not helping you to reduce the delusions, but instead it is increasing your delusions, then that is not being true Dharma. There is something wrong there. Maybe we are going wrong direction. Maybe we are not doing the practice properly. Of course, when we say reducing the delusions, it doesn't mean again, all the delusions have reduced, you know. For some people, maybe they have problem with anger before, very strong anger issue. Maybe they still have issue with anger, but maybe after practicing the Dharma, it has become less. They still, there is still, they have issue with anger, but relatively compared to what they used to have, they have less problem now. So that is sign of improvement. That is a sign of that your practice has helped you to reduce certain level of your anger. For some, you know, maybe pride, sense of arrogance might be a problem. And then having practiced the Dharma, over the time, you have less arrogant, less pride. Even though maybe it's not totally gone, but still um, is less, you know. Um, so that is sign of some improvement. For some, maybe we have so much attachment, so much too strong and too strong attachment and desire before. And maybe too many desire, too many attachments. But after having met the Dharma and having started to practice, maybe we might have still attachment, but with less. Or maybe the attachment is not as intense as before. You know, so if that is happening, then it is a, um, some signs that our practice is effective and is um, having an effect and is helping and we are in the right directions. And again, same thing, you know, before we have strong selfish attitude, we only think of ourselves, hardly think of others. But now maybe even we have selfish attitude, still we are starting to think of pain and suffering of others. So if that is happening, again, it is a sign of progress. You know? Even though we might still have some still selfish attitude, still we need to work on that, still continue to work on that. But compared to before, where it is all about ourselves, but now we are starting to think of the pain and suffering of others. Starting to have some concern for others, you know. Starting to have a little bit of compassion, a little bit of uh, loving kindness, affections towards others. That is a sign of some improvement, increase, um, it, uh, positive impact, transformations. So that is how we try to evaluate ourselves. And if we think there is some improvement, rejoice, every day rejoice. Rejoice. And then knowing that we're in the right directions, try to make more effort. 
to go further than that so that eventually we can overcome all the delusion completely not only just reduce but to be able to overcome completely and not just one delusion all the delusions and especially the selfish attitude and self-grasping thought completely um, that is that is the ultimate goal of the buddha's teachings or the, the um, that should be the, our ultimate goal not only to reduce but ultimately completely overcome and once we have overcome the selfish attitude and self-grasping ignorance from the very root of that then all other delusion which arises from those will also um, stop cease you know and so if it is not increased if if our practice is not having any effect then maybe it's something that you need to you know discuss more with your dharma friends sanghas with your teachers trying to see what is missing there what is going wrong in terms of your practice why we are not making any progress even after studying and practicing over so many uh, years you know um maybe maybe there is something we are not doing the practice correctly maybe do you, we need uh, some guidance you know um we need uh, maybe special guidance and to to really discuss about that um so otherwise then this is one way of evaluating you know when we see all this practice all different form of practice that we might be engaging in you know we might have different interests to different aspect of the practice and whatever practice that we are engaging into especially the lojong practices you know if it is having a, some positive impact then definitely definitely over the time it is not like in a short time but over a few years then we will begin to see at least small signs of our um, selfish attitude self obsessness our ego becoming a little bit you know less and we will begin to see our mind becoming a little bit more open more compassion a little bit more kind if that is happening then um then definitely our practice is having a positive impact and it's a good sign knowing that we are in the right directions on the right path on the other hand you know the more we study the dharma and the more we practice if we are becoming more and more arrogant if we are becoming you know more and more angry more and more attachments more and more in increasing jealousy and so forth then there is something wrong there is something wrong maybe we are not really integrating the practice maybe we are just 
learning the knowledge, you know, collecting the knowledge, but doesn't it really integrating into our life, doesn't really put into the practice. When we don't really integrate into our practice and in our life, and we just want to hear new and new things and collecting more and more knowledge, something I want to hear something new that I've not heard before. When we, that, when we become in that state of mind, then slowly instead of increasing the, uh, reducing the delusion, maybe we might increase the delusion. Maybe we might think, because I have so much knowledge, I think maybe I'm better than other persons. Other are less than me, you know? Because of all this knowledge, instead of, you know, then um, even when we, pr uh, when we listen to the teachings, any, any kind of teaching or reading or listening or anything, instead of it becoming a, um, like an antidote towards our delusions, instead it, it leads us to, you know, it's like we're examining the other persons who's teaching, who's writing, who's listening, examining whether they are good or not, or they are not good, or they, are, uh, they don't know how to do this and that, you know. So, so the teaching doesn't really help your mind, but instead it becomes something else. And that is when we don't really integrate, but when we are only looking for just a knowledge, information, you know, that, that there is a danger of that, it happens. There's a danger of that when we are just looking and running for after knowledge instead of trying to integrate that knowledge into the practice. And so, so that, that will be, um, that is what the meaning of that. And then second, there it says primary importance should be given to the two witness. So again, when we are evaluating ourselves in terms of our practice, um, so, so in some teachings, you know, it is uh, this is like the scale, you know, scale when you weight something, you know, and um, this evaluation like a weight how 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 wet your practice is you know uh, it's like scale you know so it is a measurement or scale or evaluating you know and one way of evaluating is you know sometimes um we ev evaluate on the basis of uh, on the basis of opinion of others and opinion of ourselves, you know. Sometimes uh, people will say, you know, oh, I can see the difference. I can see you have changed, for example. Oh, I can see you have become a more calm. Sometimes we might even Sometimes we ourselves not, might not notice that. But someone, people around us, our family, our friends, sometimes they might see the differences, notice the differences. And they might say, you know, oh, you have become more patient. Before you are so impatient. Um, now you are more, it seems you are more kind, more calm more understanding, more respectful, and so forth, you know. So with that, that is one of the witness or other, through other people's um, opinions and witness, we begin to eva evaluate and see where we are, or whether we are making any progress or not. That's one way of evaluating.
sometime, even we are making small, small progress, sometimes it might be not easy to see it ourselves because the transformation, the change is happening very slowly in a very subtle way. It's like, you know, yourself, when you are growing up, whether as a child or as you grow older, sometimes because even though there is changes that is happening in our body, we don't see that changes because it's happening very subtle and slowly. And then after someone who we have not seen for one year, they say, oh, you have changed a lot. Oh, they see it because they haven't seen for a year or a few years it is noticeable for them. Oh, you have grown up so much. They might not say, but they will say in their mind, you have become so old now. <laughs> you know, in case of, as we are getting older, when you are young children, they will say, oh, you have grown up so much. So tall. As we get older, they see, oh, you have become so old. They wouldn't say dare to say that, but in their mind, oh, I haven't seen now. You have lost your hair. Your hair has become a, whatever little hair you have has become a gray, white, you know. Um, so, I might not seem change myself because I see everything and it is very slow and that, but then, but when someone, they can notice. Same way, you know, when sometimes when you're uh, gaining a weight or losing a weight, on every day you don't see, of course, if someone's kind of used the scale, they might see a little bit, but otherwise, but then someone say, oh, how come you have become so skinny? You know, or how come you have gained so much? They wouldn't dare to say that, but, <laughs> you know, they will not dare to say it, but in their mind, they can see it. You have gained a lot. And sometimes we can't see it, but other one can see easily. You know, so that just to give an example in physical and same in, in on a uh, mental level, emotional level, uh, you know, so yeah, anyway, um, it's something, you know, something just came, the culture, you know, uh, still a lot of my families in the Nepal. And also in India, my friends, you know, they are happy if they see me a little bit more on weight. And they start get worried if they see me a little bit skinny. Uh, uh, hmm. So anyway, um, so what I was, yeah, uh, about that sometime. So one way evaluating through others' opinions, them being as a witness to our transformation, our change, positive transformation and change, you know. And other witness is ourself, you know, ourself. You know, regardless what others says, we try to look in ourselves, we try to check ourselves, our mind, our behavior, our speech, our thoughts, and see, you know, um, whether there is a, um, whether you have seen some positive transformations, positive changes.
because we know ourselves best. You know, we are the one that we have been ourselves all the time. The other closest people who know our better is, you know, our people who have been around us for a long time, whether it's our parents, children, friends that we have been all together. Even there, they don't know us enough. They are not 24 hours with us. We are with ourselves 24 hours. We know, we ourselves know how we behave with different peoples, with different sentient beings. We ourselves know how, how, how we use our speech, when and with whom. We ourselves know what is going in our mind, what kind of thoughts, what kind of feelings, what kind of emotions that is going in our minds. So we are the best, we are the one who know ourselves the most. So therefore, you know, that being the case, among the two witnesses, the principal witness should be yourself. Among the opinion, your opinion is the principle. So with that, you know, um, again, we don't have to be so um, obsessed with others opinion sometimes we become very obsessed with that you know what other things what others says and when we become too obsessed with others opinion others suggest other suggestion uh, suggestions sorry um others view of what we are, who we are, how we are doing, what we are doing, then you lose your own kind of ability to make your own judgment and to look yourself deeply. And if someone says bad, we get very depressed. If someone says good, you get too excited. So your, then our life is kind of in the hands of others' opinion suggestions, you know? And then it's all about, instead of being honest with yourself and looking deeply inside yourself, we become too occupied with trying to have other people's opinions all the time and affecting our life on the basis of other people's opinions, you know? we tend to go to that kind of extreme a lot of, lot of time, a lot of people. And when you do that, then you can see, you know, people being very affected, affected very strongly by one person's opinion. Instead of believing in their own ability and in their own practice, they become very depressed and affected very strongly by one person's opinion. On the other hand, we can become go to another extreme where we don't care what others think or what others opinion are at all, you know. Um, again, finding the balance. Others opinions and witness is important. At the same time, the most important that we pay is to our own witness. And that means looking much more deeper 
in ourself. And because other persons doesn't know as well as we know ourselves. So they can be deceived. So in that, in that um, area, you know, Nagarjuna uh, says there are four kinds of people. And he gives example of mango, because in India there's a lot of mango and different kinds of mangoes. A lot of different kinds of mangoes. So he gives the example of mango, four kinds of mangoes. He said the mango, you know, which is wrapping, uh, unwrap, uh, wrapping, wrapping outside, not wrapping inside. So outside it looks uh, yellow, but inside it's not wrapping. From outside it looks like it's wrapping because it's uh, yellow, you know. And then outside, so that one's outside unwrapping and in yellow un, uh, outside unwrapping and inside is wrapping. And then there are some mango which are outside is green, look like unwrapping, but inside is wrapping. You know, there are some mango like that. They don't become a really yellow, even when it's wrapping, it is just a green. And then there are others mango which is both wrapping inside and outside. That means outside it is yellow, which is a kind of sign of ripening inside also ripen and then there are also which is not out ripen inside and outside that's outside is green and also inside is raw not ripen four type of mango similarly there are four type of people like that or not only four type of people maybe sometimes we become all of them at different times and sometimes Ripen outside and not ripen inside is outside you look good, you know, kind, compassion, but inside you are very selfish, very self centeredness, you know. Outside with your some certain behavior, your actions, it looks like you are very kind of, you know nice guy, kind, compassion, caring. But deep, deep inside, you are very selfish, very self-centered. There's a difference between the external be expressions or the, the external behavior and inside. And then there are some inside is gold, like a gold heart, golden heart, very kind, compassion, loving, caring inside, but outside they look like very arrogant, uncompassionate, unkind. Sometimes we have certain people like that. A lot of people judge them to be, you know, not nice persons, unless they know them very well enough. Once they make friends with them and they begin to know them, then they begin to see how good that person is, how compassionate that person, how generous that person is, how kind that person is. But if you see just like, you know, outside somewhere, the way they speak, the, the, the way they interact, the way their behavior, it seems like they are, um, you know, something else, someone else. And so that is ripening inside and not ripening outside. And then of course, then there are others who are not ripening inside as outside, where in the inside there's full of, 
you know, selfish attitudes, self grasping, full of all delusions, and also outside very mean, unkind, aggressive, you know, too judgmental, um, you know, problem with anger, desire, all of that, you know, arrogant, so on. So that is unwrapping both inside and outside. And then there are others who are wrapping inside and outside, like both sides of us. Inside, full of love, compassion, wisdom, caring, openness, you know, tolerance. And also outside, very subdued in terms of their, you know, speech, in terms of their physical um, expression or gesture um, and emotions. So, and that is uh, ripening both inside and outside. So the Nagarjuna's advice is we should try to be, if possible, ripening inside and outside. If not, try to be wrapping inside and even is not outside. And then the other one will be not wrapping inside and um, uh, wrapping outside. It's better than that someone is not wrapping both inside and outside. So in terms of kind of the, uh, you know, um, their kind of what you call a uh, number is like that, uh, that we should inspire from being, from not wrapping inside and outside to being ripening, um, you know, outside even is not inside. And then going beyond that and being ripening inside even is not ripening outside. And then being ripening both inside and outside. And so what is also shows is therefore, we cannot rely, totally rely on someone's opinion. Because, you know, I might be unwrapping inside and outside is wrapping and they think, oh, I'm wrapping, you know. Outside, they might think I'm compassionate, kind. Whereas inside, I might not be. And so therefore, you know, and when they started, they said, oh, you, you are very compassionate, kind. And if I don't know how to evaluate myself with my own opinion, with my own witness, then I begin to believe what that person say. And then I begin to think, oh, I'm compassionate, kind, when I'm not. And that might be deceiving, not only others, deceiving myself deceiving yourself then we deceive everyone and that will be the worst when you deceive yourself in that way because if i feel i'm compassionate kind when i'm not then i will not put effort to be compassionate and kind and try to change that because i think i'm on the right path when i'm not on that path And I'm thinking I'm on the right path and I'm deceiving myself on the basis of what? On the basis of someone's, you know, impressions. On the basis of someone's impression and someone's opinion. And so therefore, that is where it's uh, among those two witnesses we should rely on the principle and the principle, the main witness should be yourself, your own wisdom, your own inner um, wisdom, your own mind. So then, then we don't deceive ourselves. Neither we deceive others but definitely so we don't deceive ourselves. 
you know. So we know where we are and where we need to make progress, where we need to work on. So then once you know that, then we'll more more effort to work on where we need to work on. And then you don't kind of, you know, be deceived by someone's impressions. And you might think, oh, that is their impressions. That is their impression, but I know who I am and where I need to work on. And that is, so now we don't kind of deceive ourselves as well as others, you know. So that is what it means that we, we need to be um, I think that is very important, important. Hmm. It's possible, you know, because we like to hear others' opinions. And then if we try to evaluate on the basis of just others' opinions, you know, Sometimes people try to be, you know, um, I don't know, politically correct, or maybe um, trying to be kind, compassionate, and they will always try to say, oh, how, it's, it was very nice, it was very good, even when it is not. And when someone, so many people tell you that, you know, oh, and then over and over and again, and then you started to believe, even when you are not that. And that is very dangerous. And that is the world we live in nowadays. It's hard to be honest because the other person get easily hurt and nobody wants to hurt other persons. So we always have to say positive things all the time, good things all the time. Even when someone is, you know, um, so yeah, sometimes I think like we are losing the balance, you know, and I see that in every aspect, going from one extreme to another extreme, sometimes we become too rude and then we try, we want to be not rude and very compassionate and kind. Then we go to the other extreme where we can't be honest. People are, un are unable to express their honest feeling, opinion, because that would hurt other persons. So then we live in a society, what to believe, what not to believe. What other people say is right, are they being honest or not? Are they just trying to be nice or are they being honest? This is the kind of society we live in now. It's hard to know, you know, because again of that, you know, um, it is sometimes, yeah, I, I, I kind of, when I reflect and contemplate it, that, you know, we tend to go from one extreme to another extreme. And not being able to find the balance, the middle way. Hmm. It becomes such that even when you are, when someone is not being rude and honest, but it, it seems like it's rude, you know? And then of course, nobody, nobody wants to be rude. And, um, or at least most. And then, you know, um, so then, um, so that is why here, I think it's important of valuing your own witness, your own opinion more than others, others' opinions.
and rely on that. And of course, we also have to be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we can also deceive ourselves. And to be honest with ourselves, we should be able to go much more deeper level. You know, and not be afraid. Not be afraid to see a lot of the garbages. You know, sometimes when we try to evaluate ourselves, sometimes we we'll try to look inside because we see so much garbage, we get fearful. And we don't want to go there. And then we just try to look on surface level and not wanting to go beyond that. And that can be an obstacle for deeper level of growth, you know? So the willingness, the courage, fearless, to be able to go deeper and to really go through all the garbage, but also being kind, compassionate when we see all those garbages, you know, knowing that we as ordinary beings, we are not perfect. Even the Bodhisattva are not perfect. Even the Arhat are not perfect. The only one who is perfect is the Buddha. So, understanding that reality, we all, as long as we're trying, as long as we're trying to improve, as long as we're trying to be better, That's good enough at the moment, you know. Trying, if you keep on trying, one day we will have a um, positive impact. And so, so that is this, uh, and uh, then, you know, going deeper level and then really while seeing the garbage at the same time, being kind and compassionate with that and not being too harsh on yourself. So again, there is the danger of both. Again, it is always the balancing is so important. You know, if you don't go deep enough, we think there is no garbage when there is a lot of garbage. When you go deep enough, then we can become a very kind of depressed. Um, we can become a very devastated, we can become a, um, you know, a hopeless, and we can become a very harsh on ourselves. We can have a self-hatred, um, all of that to see or how, how much garbage I have. And that is when we started to think, you know, Everyone else has no garbage and I have all this garbage. But if we understand as a ordinary sentient beings in samsara, we all have those garbage and this part of being, and that is what is mean samsara beings. And with that, I think being, uh, you know, accepting with that being okay and accepting with that false, that uh, um, garbage, as long as we are making a progress, as long as we're making effort to move, to progress and to become better and then being kind and compassionate, just as we need to be kind and compassionate to others, also being kind and compassionate with ourselves is equally important especially in like these kind of situations. And through that then, uh, yeah, I, I think then uh, evaluating ourselves and um, relying on that um, 
And so that is where the Buddha said, you know, you yourself is your protector and you yourself is your enemy, you know. And so therefore, um, you know, we, we rely on our own wisdom to understand ourselves better in terms of where our situation, in terms of uh, where, in what stage we are in terms of our practice. using our own inner wisdom to evaluate that. And that is the same thing as a really good teachers when they are evaluating at students, they should be honest. They should be encouraging, kind, compassion, caring. At the same time, they should be able to point out the weakness uh, where they need to improve, increase. Only then, then they can, while they are being encouraged at the same time, you know, they should be able to point the faults, the weakness where they need to work on. Sometimes that might be a little bit kind of, you know, um, painful, hurtful for some, some, you know, when someone says, you know, this is where your mistake is. We don't want to, want anyone to point our mistake, our faults, our defects. But how are we going to increase, improve, unless someone point when we are unable to point ourselves? When we are unable to see ourselves, sometimes others point and help us to see it. In the same way, uh, either, either others, in the same way, sometimes even when we try to look at them, sometimes, uh, you know, um, as I mentioned before, because we are the one who know ourselves most best. And so, so I think we will have a break, okay? 10 minutes break. So then um, another um, the third line which says constantly cultivate only a peaceful mind. So So again, what it means is, you know, no matter what kind of situation or circumstances um, arises in our life, you know, um, sometimes we might have health issues, sometimes we have good health, sometimes we might have issue with our relationship, any kind of relationship, challenges in our relationship. Sometimes we have better relationship, you know. Sometimes we have financial situations, challenges, difficulties. Sometimes we have better situations, finance situations. Sometimes the world we live in is a crisis. Like at the moment, you know, there's a pandemic, there's a very negative political environment. Um, and so, you know, a lot of things, a lot of difficult time, challenging, whether it is in our individual uh, life, whether it is in the world that we live in, whether it is in both of that, um, you know, sometimes things are better, sometimes things are great within the samsaric context. Sometimes things are bad. Sometimes things are much more worse, you know, and things keep on changing. Uh, that is, so regardless of whatever, even though there's a lot of things happening outside, changes, but if we can keep our mind peaceful and calm, then, you know, we suffer less. A lot of time, 
we suffer more because of our, uh, due to those situations, our mind become very dis distressed. Our mind become very depressing. Our mind become very negative, hopeless, pessimistic. Due to all of those different feelings, emotions, that it makes much more worse. You know? So here, the, 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 that is why Shandideva said, you know, no matter what happened, uh, we train ourselves to be cheerful, optimistic, hopeful, and happy and peaceful as much as we can. And if we train our mind to be that, then it doesn't affect so much by the external changes and adversaries and challenges. And when our mind is more calm, peaceful, you know, when our mind is more calm, peaceful, we can be, we are able to be more kind and compassion to others as well. When our mind is disturbed, agitated, and not calm and peaceful, we tend to become more mean. We tend to become more unkind normally for ordinary beings. So keeping your mind calm, peaceful, and joyful, if possible, is key for our own mental well-being, our physical well-being, as well for the well-being of the, um, you know, our families, friends who are surrounding us. Because when they see you more peaceful, calm, it gives them joy, happiness. On the other hand, if they see you, your mind agitated, disturbed, it makes them sad, unhappy. And also when our mind is not peaceful, not calm, small, small things can trigger us, make us very easily agitated, frustrated, make us become very impatient very easily and give rise to anger, hatred, all, all those negative feelings, uh, thoughts, and then that, that will also then lead us to be, uh, you know, engaged in a more harmful, um, hurtful um, behavior and action towards others. So then it bring more, more, damage, more pain, more suffering to others as well. And so therefore that is where, so here it is saying, you know, no matter what happens around us, if you are able to keep your mind peaceful, calm, that is a sign that your meditations on Lojong is having a um, positive impact. And you are able to do because whatever circumstances, situation arises, we are able to see it some positive way and then through that transform into the path. And when you are able to do that, when you are able to see something positive in that and to be able to kind of change and transform into the path to the enlightenment, then you are, you, our mind doesn't get so disturbed, so, so agitated and our mind doesn't become so unhappy. And so that's a sign of, it's a sign or measure of that our practice of meditation on Lojong is having some, we are making some progress in that. 
that is another way of evaluating ourselves. On the other hand, you know, small things happen and then we start to feel very effect negatively, you know. Of course, sometimes when there is a big adversaries and challenges, you can see, but sometimes, you know, sometimes even very small things, even the very small changes, even the very small adversities, small difficulties, if you start to affect you in a negative way, you know, letting you to have too much anxiety, too much worry, too much fear. too much impatience, too much frustrations. That means we still need to work a lot, of, a lot on Lojo. Because when we are in that, then our mind is not calm, peaceful. And when our mind is not calm, peaceful, not only we suffer, but then we are in danger of creating more harm, damage and hurt to others as well. And so that is, uh, that is the here that that means is, is important, you know, and that is the only way we can really be happy in our life. We live in a life where everything is impermanent. Our body, our health is impermanent. Our emotions, our mind impermanent. Everything that's around us is impermanent. So everything is going to change time to time. Not only time to time, it's changing actually. Each moment, if you look more deeper level. And so when those changes happen, how can we make peace with that? How can we be, make peace with that? How can we make peace with the change? How can even the change that we do not want? But when even the change we do not want, and even we make an effort, but when we cannot stop from happening, change happens. So then in those cases, how can we make peace with that? How can we, embrace that and how can we be okay not only okay maybe even happy and joyful with that and it's training your is how to train your mind to do that and if we can train and do to be able to do that then your life will be very joyful you know you wish it is not raining today and it rains you are okay with that You know, you wish your relations is better, but it's not, you are also okay with that. You know, you wish our job situation, our financial situation would be better, wish better than this, maybe it is not still fine and okay with that. doesn't mean that doesn't make you like a kind of indifference and kind of like a robot, you know. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that to make our, with that to make ourselves kind of like a robot, no emotions, no feelings, okay? But basically it doesn't bother in a way that it make you so, you know, negative, depressed devastated, overwhelmed, you know? If this happens, it's great, but if it doesn't happen, it is the other way around, also I'm okay with that. So we need to develop that kind of mentality. And if we have trained and to be able to develop that, I think, you know, you can be happy and joyful anywhere you go with any kind of situations, you know.
I mean, it, we can see with um, one example, you know, with His Holiness Dalai Lama, you know, he wish Tibet is free, you know, and he works very hard to, to, to have that. But also he's as, even though that is not happening while he's still trying his best effort to that, he's happy and joyful in his life. He's not depressed, overwhelmed, frustrated, you know. And he is able to do that because of his practice of lojong. And someone can reach that point when you have done that. Neither he is like a indifference without any kind of, you know, no feelings. He has full of compassion, he cares, he understands the pain and suffering of the world. At the same time, he is not affected in terms of frustrated, anger, agitation, disturbed, you know. His mind is still very calm. And, um, Yeah, I think that is also like, you know, uh, also in my life, my kind of approach has been, you know, I think I can say at least maybe in the last five, 10 years, you know, of course I have certain desire, certain wish to do certain things in your life of your, about your life and all of that. Um, but also I'm always kind of my, train my mind to open if things changes and become the other way around. I'm happy with that too. You know, so I prepare my mind to all the possibilities. I would, I would like, I would wish to go in this direction but I prepare myself, if it goes other directions, the opposite directions, also I'm happy with that, I wish, I'm okay with that. And so always kind of preparing that in every situation, in everything. And so, you know, um, if something that, that at least on mental level that I can adjust easily, So then it is not such a kind of unprepared surprise shock. Your mind is already kind of prepared a little bit. Your mind is already kind of, you know, um, to that situation, the worst situations. And also I started to think if that happens, what is good, what is a good side in that? And when I started to think, I also see that a good side in that too. You know, yeah, one of, one of the example it, it is a kind of, um, I think that it is a, not a great example. I think it seems a little bit kind of, um, the example might seem a little bit kind of extreme, you know. Um, but, you know, sometimes I think, you know, supposedly, you know, I'm diagnosed as a cancer. I started thinking, oh, there is a good side in that too. At least I know when, how much time I have, I have time to prepare it. You know, anyway, we have to die. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of how long and how less. But supposedly, if I have something like that, I find out that, you know, at least, at least that will give me some kind of, you know, whether it's a few years, few months, whatever, when you know, at least the time to really prepare yourself in that way. So there is goodness in that, for example. And so that is what I try to see in every situation, you know. I wish, of course, I wish and I try not to have that one. But in case something happened that, that 
still I see something positive in that. And that is what I try to kind of, you know, approach in my life and trying to see, you know, oh, if this doesn't go that way, that direction, also there is a good positive things and there is something I can change and something positive come from that. And, and to be able to see then, I think your mind is started to be okay with that. While you are trying to make your life or, or to go in certain direction, but at the same time, you, you don't, you are not totally, not totally have any kind of strong resistance towards going the other directions. And so even tr by trying your best, if something goes in other way around, I think, you know, you can, you can kind of adjust more easily and accept it more easily, be peace with that easily and be okay with that easily. And, um, you know, and that has been kind of, you know, I have, I, I've also come with many, many kind of challenges, uh, you know, at different times with different situations, different things, you know, um, you know, even though I might be kind of disappointed at the very beginning when things didn't go in certain directions and but i'm able to kind of adjust and move quickly and to to let go of that disappointment easily without holding for days weeks months and years you know and just accepting the new reality and then thinking positive about that and goodness of that and um, and that has been great helpful great helpful for me to adjust when things kind of doesn't go the way you want you know, in a, in a different uh, different um, part of your life and uh, in different situations, you know. Um, so I think um, uh, I think it is um, It is all on how we focus our mind on, you know. As I mentioned also many times, you know. If we just focus on negative side, then, and if we don't see any positive, if we don't see the positive side in that situations, in that circumstances, in that event, in that experience, then definitely it can be a very depressing, um, very negative, very frustrating, very overwhelming, all of that. But there are also positive sides. And if, they, if you focus on the positive side, you know, then um, on the, um, then you know then you your mind become a little bit uplifted you know it's not all black and white you know so your mind can be uplifted and then your mind can be you know on one side you see um, you know there is negative but at the same time you also see positiveness in that and by to be able to see that positiveness that goodness that um the benefit, the help, the benefit, then your mind can be uplifting, more kind of joyful, less, less, um, you know, less depressed, less disappointment, less upset, less angry, less frustrating, you know. And so I think that is the key, you know. And also, you know, for example, you know, yeah, and focusing that uh, uh, on sometimes it's also helpful, you know, like for example, if we have a health issue, you know, for example, you know, at least I'm not totally bedridden, you know, 
even though my you can think you know and be, being grateful and happy that you are not totally bedridden you know and even we are in bedridden you know at least we are still alive we are not dead at least we still have the opportunity to practice as much as we can so always you know thinking things could have been much worse i'm glad it's not 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 as that was and when you see things could go much more worse than that and i'm so grateful it is not as bad that will give you some kind of appreciations um, of your situations even though it's not not, not the greatest situations but just being aware of that how things could get much more worse than that and that is not so worse can give you some more hope optimistic some more uplifting and joy and so it is life is all about like that how you how you direct your mind in what directions you know instead of thinking you know oh you know um it's so bad it's worse you know when you think this is the worst that that could have happened to me that has happened to me then it can be very very uh, depressing negative but instead if you can see oh it could have been much more worse i'm so glad i'm so happy and glad it is not so worse it's just like you know you see sometimes when there is a tragedy you know when there is a, like a earthquake or hurricanes and um, flood and so forth you know sometimes people lose everything but then there are some people who feel grateful that they are still alive you know they feel so grateful because there are so many others who have lost their life so grateful that they feel they are still alive even though they lost everything or sometimes they feel very grateful that they didn't lose any of their family member even though they lost everything house everything everything they earn so why why they do feel that why why they feel so grateful because they see you know it could have been much worse much worse that they could have lost themselves and at least they are alive and so it is just focus because their mind is able to focus on that they are alive instead of focusing on losing all of that and they they can feel grateful and appreciations and you see that very often when that kind of tragedy happen for a lot of many other people among so many peoples that kind of thing. so it just show we do have ability to feel that way if we direct our mind in that way and we have to train that to do that we have to train to do that you know and so that is constant that we always have to train our mind you know to accept while we, we will always have certain direction certain wish aspirations how things we want to go and we try that at the same time your mind being totally open flexible possibility of things could go differently and if things go differently the 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 flexibility the willingness to be okay happy with that and started to think the goodness in other way too in other situation as well starting the positive and goodness in that as well now even before that because once that happened if you have not thought it it will be very happy to say any positive in that do you get it when really happens when you really start if you are not prepare yourself 
to see something positive, you know, goodness in that. When it really happened, even someone said there is goodness, and it, it will be very hard for us. But if we have trained our mind all the time, when even it is not happening, just thinking, reflecting, contemplating the possibility of that. And if it happened, there is a good side of that, the positive side in that, and just feeling and understanding that. And then if it does things happen, then your mind is kind of to some degree already kind of trained and kind of um, so then easy to kind of relate with that. Um, I think there is a one I saw called questions. Just a couple of days ago, I fell out of balance between compassion and anger with a friend. Quickly, I realized what I had done and named it compassion and conflict. But it was too late. I heard both of us. Yeah, I think we do a lot, lot of time like that. We do a lot of time uh, that. I think first of all, recognizing that you have done that, being aware of that is uh, good. For a lot of people, they are not aware of that. A lot of people, they are not aware, aware they have hurt others, you know? They think the other ones have hurt me. I didn't hurt that person. A lot of the time, that is how it is. Oh, I didn't hurt them. He hurt me, you know? To recognize, that I've hurt someone and acknowledging that and then um, knowing that we need to improve on that, we need to work on that so that we don't um, engage in such um, situation again in the futures. Um, so I think just being aware of course, it would have been much more better if we are aware before that, you know? So maybe we might have all this stopped being in that situation. But even we are not aware at that time, even being aware later is also very um, good. Being aware, acknowledging, and then wanting to improve, wanting to uh, work so that we don't um, end up in the same situation again. So I think that is wonderful. Um, for a lot of time, you know, we are not even aware of that. Sometimes we have been hurting someone for maybe years and years and we are not even aware of that. And sometimes even when we have a little bit aware because of our eco, eco stick mind, we don't want to acknowledge it. We don't want to accept it. You know, we are aware we are hurting someone, but you don't want to acknowledge, you don't want to, um, we don't want to accept and acknowledge it because it might feel like you are weak. You don't want to feel like you are, uh, uh, you want to see him as a weak sometime, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe sometime, maybe now in our cases, maybe some of the leaders are doing that. Maybe they are aware, but they are not willing to take the responsibility and not willing to acknowledge that. Because then that means they are seen as a weak. And they don't want to be seen as a weak, you know. Um, and so that kind of, uh, that kind of can also arise in ourselves and many others, you know. Um, so then, it, 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 it requires courage, courage and certain level of courage and fearless to acknowledge our mistake and accept and take responsibility of that. You know, it, is, it doesn't come to everyone. Those who have fear, those who have not so much courage, they wouldn't be able to um, acknowledge and accept and take responsibility of that, you know. Um, so that is a good sign, you know. Um, hmm. 
so so with first three what we have seen is you know whatever practice we do if we are able to act that practice as an antidote towards the delusion especially selfish attitude and self grasping then it's a sign that we have made some progress in our lojong practice you know and and when we are able to use our own when we are able to look in within ourselves instead of always looking outside you know but when you are able to look inside and within ourselves and on the basis of that and if we are able to make evaluations of our practice on the basis of our own inner wisdom and our um, in you know inner realizations on the basis of that and with our own mind then again it's a sign of some progress in our lojong practice and our mind training because normally you know instead of investigating insight looking with our wisdom insight we tend to look outside all the time and re rely on outside now here but when we try to rely on our own inner experience our own wisdom our own realizations to evaluate and to see things where we are and so forth then that is a sign that we have made some progress in our spiritual uh, uh, in our lojong practice and then you know when we are able to keep our mind calm peaceful cheerful no matter what happens positive optimistic no matter what happens then there's sign that is another sign that we have made some progress in our lojong practice in our spiritual practice you know um so these are the the four of the sign and then um i think it should be the last one and then um the the next two verses i think maybe more than that maybe the trained mind retains control even when distracted and so that means you know when we are able to transform whatever situation arises in our life into the path even when we are distracted even when we are not putting any effort effortlessly because of our familiarity with that practice then that is a sign of again having made a, a progress in our lojong practice you know at the moment you know when things happens you know when things happens and especially when um things happens when we do not things that we do not want when things happen which we do not want you know whether you call it challenging difficult adversity unwanted you know um it lead us to you know uh, despair depress feeling of loneliness you know anxiety um worry frustrations impatience um anger whatever different negative emotions those different emotions arises and we can be in those state for long time long time sometimes not even being aware that we are in those state of minds for a long time and sometimes we are aware but you know we are unable to do anything and sometimes we are aware and we are able to apply some practice 
and by practicing, by applying some of the practices, whatever practice, whatever different method of meditation or practice, then we are able to kind of slowly, slowly transform and change it. You know, from being frustrated to less frustrated or not frustrated, from being impatient to become more patient or, or uh, you know, not having any impatience, from being feeling of anxiety worry to having a, or to less worry, less anxiety to not having worry and that and so forth, you know, and so and then also to be able to transform those situations into the path by putting effort. But if we start with, with a lot of practice, if we continue to apply that all the time, every day, all the time, in all situations, over the time, when something happens, without any effort, you will just naturally go into that state of, to be able to, to be able to bring the practice without any effort, even without thinking about it, it just comes natural. Because with familiarity, because we have practiced so much with that familiarity, now it has become almost like habits. And habits of that way of thinking, that way of attitude. And to be able to transform into the path effortlessly. When that happens, then it's very clear signs that we have made a progress in our lojong practice, you know. So, you know, um, many different examples, you know, can be, for, for example, you know, um, even when you, are, when you are reciting, when you, it's a small mantra and someone who is familiar with that, even your mind is distracted, you can recite that, you know. If it's some new mantras you are learning, if you distract it, you will not be able to say it. You have to concentrate. Okay. Or is any any other kind of prayers or practice you are learning first time and because you don't have familiarity and it's not so familiar, so you have to give a lot of effort and concentrate. Otherwise, you will uh, not be able to recite correctly. But when something you have recited so much and that familiarity, it doesn't require any effort. You, your mind be thinking all over the world, still you are reciting correctly, Om Mani Padme Hum, okay? So like it's like that. Even when you're distracted, you are reciting the Om Mani Padme Hum correctly in terms of the, the, uh, the word itself, you know? And same way, sometimes they give example in some of the lojong, they give example, a very skilled horse rider, even when they are distracted, they can still ride the horse without falling down. But someone who is learning to ride first time or at the very beginning, they have to pay a lot of attention, focus, concentrate. Otherwise they will be thrown away. They will, they will fall. You know, similarly, when we have practiced enough and with that kind of familiarity, it becomes very kind of natural habits. It's just come natural response that way, you know? And when that happens, then that is here what is saying, then that is a sign uh, when you are able to do that. That is another sign that you have um, make a progress in your, uh, your mind training, lojong. And that is another way of measuring or evaluating where your practice is. But even when you have reached those points, it doesn't mean you, you don't need to continue to practice. You know, we do need to continue, but at least we know we have made some progress, something we can rejoice something we know we're on the right path. Um, and, um, and that could give you more encouragement, inspirations. Hmm. And if, it not, if that is not the case, then it is a reminder for us to, that we need to practice more, that we need to work more. 
Okay, so I think maybe today we'll stop here. Let me see with it. Um, I've noticed some people really have difficulty apologizing, even if they know they are mistaken. Is that ego, pride, fear of being judged? Is the same for us when we don't apologize easily. Yeah, I think it could be any of that. It could be fear, you know, um, fear of losing your, fear of losing your, our face. Um, it could be fear of being judged by others, definitely. Um, it's a fear of losing, uh, you know, um, and definitely it's ego. All of that comes from ego, you know. It is definitely all of them, uh, all of that, the fear of losing uh, our face, uh, the fear of um, people being judging us badly, the fear of that people might think you are weak for apologizing it. Uh, all of those are because of our ego, our egoistic mind. There's no doubt our egoistic. So fundamentally is egoistic, you know? And so I think that is the, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it is, uh, it, it come from that fundamentally from that egoistic mind, the ego mind, you know? Um, yeah, so we will do the dedications. May all beings everywhere plagued by the suffering of body and mind obtain an ocean of happiness and joy by virtues of my merit. May no living creatures suffer commit evil or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid or belittled with a mind weighed down by depression. May the blind see forms and the deaf hear sounds. May those whose bodies are worn with all be restored on finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drink. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope, constant happiness and prosperity. May there be timely rains, bountiful harvest. May all medicine be effective and wholesome prayer bear fruit. May all who are sick and ill quickly be free from all, all their elements. Whatever disease they are in the world, may they be never again. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound be freed. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other for as long as space remains, for as long as sentient beings remain. Until then, may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. The wish granting, wish fulfilling, juice source of every single benefit and happiness in this world to the incomparable kind things in Yazo, I beseech. May all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. You who uphold the subdue moral way, who serve as the bond provider of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading men should not be choice doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayer, honor, and three jewels, savior of myself and others, your disciple, please, please live long. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.